Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build video, I'm making armor from one of my all-time favorite movies, Starship Troopers. And that's because my inbox was inundated with Helldivers 2 stuff, and while I think the armor looks okay, I'm like, if I'm gonna make Starship Troopers knockoff, why not make the real deal? And the thing that I really love about this is all of this is made out of my HD foam. This is by far one of the cleanest, but I think most screen accurate EVA foam costumes I have ever put together. The thing I also love about it is, just like all the rest of my builds, free PDF files can be found over on my website in case you would like to make your own. All that I ask, like my videos, share my videos with your friends, comment on here, help the algorithms. If you want to take it a step further, by all means, you can donate through links that are on my website. And always pick up some HD foam from Blick Art Materials. Every time you do, not only are you getting the best foam to craft with, but you're supporting the Federation. Now. In this video, you're gonna see that I am injured in the beginning, and that's because I had an accident in the shop before I started building it, and all I could think was Sergeant Zim going, a prop maker cannot make a prop if you disable his hand. So for all of us, be sure to be safe out there. Even professionals like me can still have accidents from time to time. So if you wanna know more, I wanna show you what it takes to put this armor together. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by taking part A and tracing that out of some 10mm HD foam. When tracing, make sure to note all the individual armor sections. A well sharpened utility knife is used to cut out the foam. Then I'm going to start to round over the foam to help it conform better to my chest. Strips of 2mm foam are glued to the back side of the armor with some super glue while the foam is curved. This is going to help the foam retain this shape and keep it from going flat. Part B is also traced and cut out of 10mm foam. This is going to make the back of the armor. Just like the front, the shoulders and the middle of the back are curved to help conform. For the separation on the sides, I'm going to be attaching some 1 inch elastic. To make it easier to get your head in and out, you could also leave one of these sides open. The elastic is glued into place using my double adhesive method of super glue and hot glue. And to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, a small section of 2mm foam is super glued on top. Now in this build, this opening is wide enough for my head, but feel free to change the size of the opening to fit you. Part C is going to make up the lower back of the armor, and this is also going to be traced and cut out of 10mm foam. And the last base piece is going to be Part D, and this is going to make up the abdomen section of this armor. Unlike the other pieces, this is going to be traced and cut out of 6mm foam, which is going to make it easier for this piece to wrap around the body. Before I start adding all the detail plates, I want to remove these sections from part D. 
To make sure I get a clean cut, I'm going to start at each end with a Forstner bit. You could also use a leather hole punch or a drill bit. With the ends cut, I can now connect the circles, opening the foam up using a hobby blade. Now at this point, I'm not really worried about them looking perfect because I'm going to clean them up later with a heat tool. At this point, I can also add these slats on the sides, where I'm going to insert nylon strips later on. For all the tiny armor plates, this is a great opportunity to utilize all those scrap pieces. All these armor sections are going to be cut out of 10mm foam, and as an example I'm going to start with A1. All of these pieces are going to need to be cut with an angle, and there's a couple different ways to do that. Number one, you could just cut the angle by hand using a hobby or utility blade. Number two, you could cut the angle close and then refine it with a rotary tool. Number three, my buddy Jacob at Rocket Props makes the bevel. This is a manufactured tool that he designed. There are two different variations, one where you could add a hobby blade and one with a snap-off. Either one of these tools can be set to the desired angle that you want, and I'll have a link to Rocket Props website down in the description section. The last way to cut these angles and what I'm going to be using for the majority of this build because I've got to get it done quick is my bandsaw. All of the edges on these armor sections are going to be cut at approximately a 25 degree angle. After the pieces have been cut out, they could then be glued to part A using some super glue. Another thing to note is if you have raised armor sections, for them to wrap around the armor, you always want to use a foam ruler. That's because of the additional thickness that the foam creates. It's going to be a different measurement than if you used a tape ruler. Once I was satisfied with the look, I could then cut out all the armor pieces for part A. Just to make sure I matched up everything just right, I started at the top of the armor and worked my way down. Now the armor sections on either side of the neck need to be curved while being glued into place. Just like the 2mm strips on the underside, this is going to help this armor retain this shape. The curve to match the armor was also added to the outside sections A5 and A11. Since I'm working on the front right now, I decided to cut out all the armor pieces for the abdomen, which is going to include parts D1 through D9. All these pieces could be glued into place while the armor is laying flat. Before I add parts D10 through D17, I figure it's time to clean up the holes on the sides. Using a flat paddle on the heat tool, I was able to cauterize the foam. Now remember when heating or sanding foam to always wear your respirator. Now for parts D10 through D17, the foam underneath is going to need to be curved to wrap around your body. These strips are also going to be cut out of 10mm foam, but the angles for the edges are cut at 10 degrees instead of 25. After all the sections have been heat treated, they can then be glued to the sides while the foam is rounded. Start in the middle and work your way out. They should end approximately where the holes on the ends stop. But just like the upper armor, gluing these sections onto the foam while it's curved will help keep this rounded shape. Now to move on to the back of the armor, all of these sections are also going to be cut out of 10mm foam. Now some of these interior cuts are tricky and pretty much just have to be done by hand.
For these interior sections where the foam is removed, I did a rough cut with the bandsaw. And then to clean that up, I used the same paddle bit on my heat tool. Just like the front of the chest armor, I start in the middle at the top and I work my way to the bottom, making sure to line up the cutout sections on the sides. It's not as severe on the back as it is on the front, but these pieces at the top also needed to be rounded over before being glued into place. The same process is also going to be repeated for the lower back armor. All these sections are going to be cut out by the bandsaw or by hand and then heat treated before being glued into place. The only other thing I should have done, there are two slits under C5 and C10. I'd probably recommend to cut these sections out before adhering all the other armor sections into place. Now it's time to work on the gap bridges, and to do that I'm going to use some plastic signage, which is great because they're super cheap and you can get them at just about any hardware store. I'm going to need 10 of the Part E pieces. The template is going to be traced onto the plastic and scored with a hobby knife. Then I can easily snap it off and it's a nice clean edge. I'm also going to need four pieces for part F. If your signage has some weird textures on the other side, make sure that you mirror these. One eighths inch holes can then be drilled into each corner for some rivets. Now the majority of these will not actually be riveted, so I just need to remove the nail out of the end. I just need to place the cap on a one, two, three block, hit the nail enough so that it can easily be removed. These rivets will be glued into place later on. Now to give it a machine look, I need to sand down the edges. And this plastic is pretty soft, so a sanding sponge does a great job. And I like to insert some rivets just so I can see how much material is going to be left exposed. But here you can see what a difference the sanding makes. and just continue this process for all 14 pieces. On the abdomen, there are two slits near the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that foam because nylon straps are gonna go through these later on. And just like the holes that were on the side of the armor, the paddle tip on the heat tool can clean these up as well as the slits that are on part C. Now before I start attaching all the parachute clips and triglides, I want to prime the surface using some Plasti Dip. And Plasti Dip Craft is the same as the regular, just in a different can. And with all that was going on, I almost forgot to add battle damage. So after a single coat of Plasti Dip, I went back with my rotary tool and scuffed it up here and there. I then added two more light coats of Plasti Dip before my first base color, an ultra flat green camo. This paint was just dusted onto the surface. You don't want to add it thick because it's possible it could crack. For durability and a higher saturation of color, we're going to be adding some acrylics. In this case, I'm going to mix together Liquitex Chromium Oxide Green and Turner's Yellow, along with a little bit of Cadmium Red Light. This is going to give me kind of an olive color that can be applied to the armor using a 1 inch mop brush. 
After the watered down pigment has been applied to the armor, they can go in with a damp paper towel and remove some of the excess paints. And feel free to repeat this process several times till you get the right amount of paint built up. From here I'm going to dull it back just a little bit with another dusting of the camouflage. And an even lighter application of the Valspar Gray. But all these paints combined give it a lot of depth. It's not just one flat color over the entire surface. While the armor is drying I'm going to work on the gap bridges by applying some Krylon Flat Black. Once all the pieces had dried, I could then press them into the foam so I could see exactly where they're going to go. Now the thing to note here is I decided to scrape up the back just a little bit to give it some tooth before I applied some super glue and glued these into place. We want as much adhesion as possible because the rivets we're using will be glued into place but they won't actually be riveted to the armor. Referring back and forth to my templates, I placed each one of these bridges exactly where it needs to go. Here I can apply the lower part 2F pieces, but I'm going to wait on the two that are above because they need to be rounded. For the foam to wrap around the abdomen, these other two pieces that run horizontally, I'm going to heat them up with my heat gun. Once the piece have been heated up thoroughly, I can then lay it over the paint jar until it had cooled. This is going to give a slight curve to the bridges on the abdomen. The rivets can now be attached, and it's as easy as drilling through the holes that are already on the cards into the foam. Then I can insert the rivets, add some glue, and press them into place. After a while I determined it might be a better bond if I saturated the hole with super glue and then pressed the rivets into it. Either way, it's not a lot of strain on these pieces, so the super glue should hold fine. With all of the bridges attached, it's now time to start adding the tri-glides and parachute clips. I have a link in the description section for a full kit of parachute clips, tri-glides, and nylon straps that you'll need for this armor build. I'm going to start with the armor on the lower back, and I'm going to cut two strips of 2 inch nylon to 7 inches, making sure to take a flame to the edge. Using some Sherbonder hot glue, the nylon is going to be fed through the buckle and then glued together. The strapping for these will be fed through the slits under C5 and C10 and then glued into place. Four additional strips are going to be glued to the buckles. These are going to be attached to the sides. The bottom two buckles are going to be lined up with C8 and C13. I also decide to score the foam with a hobby knife just to give it a little bit better hold before using super glue and more hot glue. And because this is a heavy strain area, as an additional precaution, I cut a strip of 2mm foam and glued that on top. That's going to make sure that this strap won't ever pull away from the foam. And here you can see all four attached, the top two lighting up with C6 and C11. The nylon straps for the lower abdomen are going to be cut to approximately 23 inches for either side. The strap itself will be fed through the triglide, the buckle, back through the triglide, and then through the lower slat on the bottom.
This can then be glued into place with some super glue and hot glue. Any excess material should be covered by the horizontal strap, but you could always cut away any excess. The same process is going to be done for the straps on the sides, and at least for my body, these are going to be set up for about 18 inches in length. Now, of course, depending on your body type, you may need more or less of these straps. So adjust the build so that the armor fits you. The horizontal strap that goes around the waist is fed through, and this is going to be approximately 50 inches in length. This will be fed through the triglides and buckles on either side. This flap in the front will eventually be glued down once I make sure that everything fits me. It's just an additional detail that's in the movie. So with the lower armor complete, I can now buckle up the sides to the back. And now it's time to move on to the strapping for the upper armor. There's going to be nylon straps on either side that will go from the front of the armor all the way to the back. These are going to be cut to approximately 49 inches in length. And here you can see where the triglide lines up on the armor. The rest of the strap feeds through the bridges to the parachute clips on the end. This is a great way to make universal armor because all you have to do is adjust the straps to fit you. The upper chest armor can now be attached to the abdomen. As well as the back plate to the lower back. With a test fit done, the front flap that I was mentioning earlier can now be hot glued into place. Now the troopers have a bunch of different pouches and I'll have links to the ones I use down below. The first will be the small ration pouch for the chest. I also picked up some mag clip pouches, but they only come in a three and I don't need the one on the end so I'm gonna remove that with a hobby knife. I'm very careful to make sure that I don't cut into the seams on the pouch that I still need. And I can clean up the edges with a lighter. I'm going to add some generic foam pieces to bulk these out, but first I want to make sure everything fits. That also goes for my grenade pouches. I think these are a little too big and I may swap them out later on, but they'll do for now. The first thing I'm going to do is bulk out my rations pouch with a couple of stacked pieces of 10mm foam. In the movies, this was a ration pouch for a lemon square, and that's what I'm trying to replicate. So after I've got my foam cut out, I can then cover this with some tin foil. And your wrapping job on this doesn't need to be perfect because most of it will never be seen. It's just an awesome little extra detail that shows you care about your build. The same thing with my ammo pouches. I'm going to eventually go back and make ones that are more screen accurate. But at this part of the build, I just wanted some stack foam to fill out the pouch. So I cut a couple pieces of 10 millimeter foam and then I wrapped some six millimeter around the top. And placing this into the pouch, I thought it was, you know what? It's good enough for cosplay. Mixing the same green that I'd used earlier, I apply that to the mags. And also dusted it with that camo green and then left these to dry. Going back to the bridge plates, I have four more to add. These will need to have a slight curve to them because the nylon strapping underneath still needs to be able to move. Once these sections have been glued into place, I could drill them out and add my rivets to these parts as well.
Now part G is going to be a little bit different. I'm still going to use my template and cut that out of the plastic sign. After the primer has been added, I'm going to heat up the middle and I'm going to bend it back upon itself. So it's going to wrap around the bottom part of the foam armor and encompass that nylon strip. This piece is going to need to be a little more stable though because it's actually going to have some weight to it holding up all those pouches. So after it's glued into place, I'll still drill it out, but these holes will go through the front all the way through the back part of the plastic as well. And this time I'm actually going to use my rivet gun to rivet these into place. This is just going to help give it some additional strength on the sides. Now if you don't have a rivet gun, don't worry, you could probably still just glue this and it would be good enough. But I try to over engineer a lot of these pieces so I don't have failures when I'm out at a con. After the rivets have been punched, I'll then take another piece of 2mm foam and I'll super glue that over the entire piece on the inside. This is going to definitely make sure that this plastic is not going to pull away from the foam. This extra riveting process is then applied to the opposite side. And because I'm riveting it just at the top and not gluing the entire thing down, that nylon strap underneath still has the ability to move or be adjusted to fit multiple body types. Another piece of 2mm foam is also glued to the back side. My mags have dried enough that they can be inserted into the pouches and the pouches can be attached to the belt. I know these aren't screen accurate, but it's okay, they do a great job stepping in for the roll. I can now attach my grenade pouches to the other side. As far as the water pouch, I had a hard time finding one I liked, but I think this one does a pretty good job. It's going to be attached behind the ammo pouches on the right side, and it came with a shoulder strap that attaches to it, wraps around the shoulder, and all the way to the ammo pouches in the front. I really like that because it's another dispersion of weight, especially if I want to add a water bottle to this pouch to stay hydrated at the con. A final touch to this armor set is going to be using some Fuller's Earth Powder and a makeup brush. I wanted this armor to look as though it had been down on planet P and had seen some action. So this dust does a good job getting into some of the nooks and crannies on the armor and in the nylon straps. And you'd be surprised at how just a little bit of dust starts to age it and unify the entire piece. As I was putting the final details on my templates the other day, I got a knock on the door and I received a package from New American Jacket. And it was my mobile infantry replica jacket that I had ordered. And I will say, as far as replicas go, this one is pretty nice. The quality is actually higher than I thought it would be. And the other thing I really like is that it comes with all of the embroidered patches that you would want for your costume. Plus, the thing that's nice about it is it's a lot cheaper than if you found one of the screen used ones. Of course, yes, we'd all love to have the screen used ones, but even the B sets nowadays are getting very, very expensive. Now, I'm about 5'7", about a 42 inch chest, and I ordered a medium, and it fits me really well. I will have links to these down below. This is not sponsored, I don't get anything from this, but if you would like your own jacket to go with your armor, give them a look. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own custom Starship Troopers armor, all made out of HD foam. And yes, I know that you could also use this for Firefly and for Power Rangers. And if you're doing that, that's awesome. I really don't care. I just want to see groups of people using this at cons. I think it would be awesome to see Starship Troopers make a resurgence at cons this year, specifically because of this template being available to you for free. 
because I'm doing my part. So if you are doing your part and using any of my templates, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.